What is going on, my UDL brethren? It is I, the good commissioner here, Maddie Brolic, and I am not alone this week. I actually am joined once again by the corrupt commissioner, Carson. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. He has joined me once again, and as usual, hasn't gotten his game done. Being corrupt as ever, now I'm just messing. He actually had a family trip this weekend, so he. Ask for an extension early, and I'll use this as a reminder to let you guys know that if you want an extension, just make sure that you ask us before the end of Friday Pacific time because we don't want people just abusing the extension rule where, like, you don't play by the end of Saturday or, like, it's Sunday and you're having trouble kind of getting on at the same time and you just ask for an extension out of nowhere. Like, it's one game a week. Just get with the, in touch with your opponent right from the beginning of the week and try to make sure that you schedule right away schedule multiple times if you have to um so this way if one time fails you have backup plans it's really shouldn't be that difficult but we understand that things come up sometimes so if you know there is going to be something where you're going away or there's just something kind of important going on in your life and you're not sure how much time it's going to take up just try to ask us for an extension and you have most of the week to do that like i said the end of friday pst that only leaves two days that you can't technically ask for an extension so with that being put out there i just also do want to add like it, this is week four and so far everyone's been doing a really good job with their games we haven't really had any games being played late we only had one forfeited so uh definitely proud of all of you for that so give yourselves seriously definitely dj and blitz tj's been getting first blood constantly so shout out to him and yeah we, we definitely appreciate that because it's a huge step up from last season. Don't even get me started on last season. It was so tough trying to round everybody up to get their games done every week. We had a bunch of people that were constantly kind of breaking the rule. And so far this week, almost halfway through the season, almost everybody has gotten all their games done. So kudos to you. Give yourselves a round of applause. And we today will bring to you top three games from week four, which was our ass. And we have some pretty good ones. Uh, some of them might have kind of haxy. Uh, events or endings but either way they came down right to the wire so we figured they were pretty exciting we had like some other solid games this week um but we just figured these were the closest some of them were kind of like controlled uh one of them that i brought up to carson that i kind of wanted to show was myself versus rob but like only the league watches these pretty much so if other people were watching them and they wanted to see a game between me and Rob because like we don't really play that often um, then it would be a little bit different but unfortunately Rob just kind of smashed me anyway so it isn't really a good game to show and you guys have the access to the replay so that's why that's all right. we're not putting that one in yeah according to <laughs> World Cup he just like basically nuzlocked all of his opponents where he didn't drop a single poker <laughs> but yeah, shout outs to Rob. He's doing great this season. And yeah, with that being said, we will. Good luck to y yeah, good luck to the Y Conference. <laughs> we'll get right into these games. First up, we have Unload to Reload, otherwise known as Big Dick Nick. We'll just call him Nick for this match. Going up against the man, the myth, the legend, the musician. His life is a movie. Top tier boy, otherwise, well, not really known as Lemonade, but that's just what he calls himself on, on PS. Exactly, the man of God. Uh, never committed a sin in his life. And, um, yeah, this, this was a matchup that I was looking forward to because I know these guys have a pretty similar style of play. So I had a feeling that it would actually be a pretty close game, and it turned out to be even closer than I expected. So Nick's got a really powerful team that has a pretty good matchup, I think, against Seb's, at least offensively, where he's got things like Landorus Eye, which Seb has, like, one of the kind of better checks for in Latias, but not really because... Obviously, something like a Life Orb knockoff or just even like you turning out on it is going to do a ton of damage. Um, and also, Nick's team matches up pretty well against Latias. So, that plus having something like Talonflame, where Seb doesn't have Flying Resist, at least in the Pokemon that he's, he's brought. I know he's got like Corsola in the back and um, Mega Scizor. But then, of course, Seb's team is pretty powerful offensively as well. He's got the nice Latias, Volcanion. Um, Mega Alakazam looks pretty nice here if he can remove the Stun Tank. So it should be a pretty interesting one. Um, like I said, both guys have a pretty offensive style. 
so I think it's going to be pretty hard hitting and fast paced. So we'll get right into this battle as um, finally I didn't play it with the music. Wow, it's kind of lagging, damn. Um, maybe it's just because of the screen share, but hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, Nick leads with the Landorus as Seb leads with his Nido Queen. I was kind of surprised that Seb switched out here. I don't know if this was really a misplay. I know he goes into a Balloon Cabalion and it works out pretty well, but I'm pretty sure uh, Needle Queen was, was Focus Sash. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty, pretty sure it was yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Beam, right? I mean, and I think he had Ice Beam, exactly. So I was kind of surprised with that, but maybe he felt he really needed Needle Queen to check something else. So here he goes for the Combine with his Cabalion. I know that he says in the chat here that he by accident took HP Ice off of his Cabalion instead of the instead of yeah the the flash cannon but i think that doesn't really matter too much because nick eventually reveals to be yachi berry and a yachi berry hidden power ice does the same amount of damage as flash cannon so but i know it kind of like affected how seb played it so it does matter in a sense but yeah had he stayed into flash cannon there would have been the same amount as he you know went Rob for hp ice there, what was that Rob Kim was super yeah special, Exactly, that was really good. I was really surprised because I thought that was going to be a pretty big pop there with the balloon and then like said, no, you have just a plus one, but right away that changed. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was really cool because it's also great for Latias coming in as well as um, either being able to U-turn out or knock off the Latias out speeding it. That'd be great. So here he brings in the uh, Latias and just goes for a Life Orb Draco. I think he had the Ice Beam, but either way, because he's Yachi, that would have done even less. As he U turns out, bringing in the Skun Tank, and he's just going to be able to, I think, Pursuit Trap this thing. As yes, he does go ahead and take out the Latias. But he did allow his Skun Tank to take a little bit of damage, which could be good for Alakazam. And here, Seb goes for the Rocks, and does reveal, like we said before, that he is Sash on the Nido Queen. So kind of. But he goes for Sludge Wave, so maybe he didn't have Ice Beam? I'm not 100% sure. Um. So yeah, I guess it would make sense if he didn't have Ice Beam, as why he switched out in the beginning, but... Need a fire move, sludge wave, rocks, maybe earth power for like some kind of move. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. And also he probably figured it would scare out the the Landorus in a lot of situations as well, because he could be Scarf, he could be Shooka, but unfortunately uh, Nick was the Yachi for Sep, and now he brings in the Heliolisk, which is just going to be able to take out the Nido Queen. Now, um... I did not know that Seb's Volcanion was Scarf because we uh, had prepped together beforehand and it was not a Scarf Volcanion. So when he brought this in on the Helios, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I think Seb's just really weak to this thing because, um, or like, why didn't he bring in Rotom? Because previously his Rotom was Scarf and now the fact that he brought in the Volcanion, which I didn't think was Scarf, I'm like, wow, he's really trying to bluff hard here. I don't know why he's, he's risking this because he really needs this for things like Talon and, and Scizor. But he actually goes for the Fire Blast and hits. A good move on his part, too, because obviously this thing could be carrying the Dry Skin. So good on Seb for knowing that. And also, Fire Blast becomes super effective. So good on Seb for, for remembering that. You never know with, with him because he doesn't play that often. But he had the wherewithal to know that and knocks out the Heliolus. So I was surprised to see that because I didn't know that it was, it was Scarf. But... He must have made a last-minute change, and it knocks out the Heliolus. So now this is looking like a pretty tight game as he brings in his Curum on Nick's side, goes right for the Earth Power, and as the Kabalian had his balloon pop before, nearly takes it out. And now he's going to bring in his Scizor. The Focus Blast misses. Uh, I would imagine that would do a good chunk, just because even if it is a Spadef Scizor, uh, Kabalion having Stab on Focus Blast makes it a pretty powerful move. As he's going to U-turn out, and um, he tries to pursue the Volcanion here, but now he suckers <laughs> Seb trash talking in the chat. Um, <laughs> you can't guard me, bro. He's crazy. Every game. I know, every game he's talking smack, even if it's not his own game. Crazy. Crazy. So here he brings in, after Nick gets off some good damage on the Volcanion, which could be nice if that like puts it in range of Talonflame. I'm not sure what set he is on the Talonflame. But here he brings in the, the Curum again, as he could probably um, live a steamer option and then knock him out with, with some uh, Earth Power Ice Beam. But yeah, it gets the Roost off too. That works out nicely, as here that Focus Blast does do a really good chunk to the Mega Scizor, so it probably would have done probably you know, well over 50. 
to a regular scissor before he had evolved. So that miss was unfortunate, but it is Focus Blast, so that's, uh, I guess, to be expected to miss at least, you know, one of three. Um, here he goes for the Bullet Punch, is able to take out the Kabalion, as here comes the Alakazam, and I guess his thought process was not wanting to get his Volcanion weakened, maybe he saw that as his win condition here, because I, both Carson and I were a little surprised to see him not bring in the Valk, as it just, like, puts on such immediate pressure i guess also he didn't want to lock into steam eruption because the curum is healthy and he you know would rather click fire blast, fire blast honestly. i i know i guess he just didn't want to miss i don't know what his thought process was there exactly the right i don't know i don't know i'm not sure maybe. yeah could be so here he goes for the hidden power knocks out the scissor and uh does take a pretty good amount of damage in the process as now here he's going to switch out and go into his Volcanion, which does get knocked out by the Brave Bird here. I think this was a Bandit Talon? Let's see how much it does here. That kind of looks like Bandit Damage, but not really. Because he's a Life Orb Rotom, so unless he was like a Max HP Life Orb Rotom. And that's interesting too, is like you're going to find out soon. I thought that that Rotom was Scarf, because initially it was. So I guess he just thought because he put Scarf on Volcanion that he like didn't need Scarf on Rotom. But as you're going to see... He brings in his Kurum against the Alakazam, and Alakazam could easily two a KO this thing uh, and, and chew a hit from this Kurum normally, but he actually has the Dragon Claw, which Nick said was specifically EV'd from max HP Alakazam. So if he wanted to try to recover up and like combine up on a Kurum, he can't. And that ends up working out really, really nicely as the Kurum is faster than this Rotom now because he took the Scarf off of it, and he's just going to be able to clean it up with Ice Beam. So Nick gets his first win against. It was actually a, a winless team versus an undefeated team, and Nick was able to knock off top tier and get a big win. Yeah, that was a really big... Yeah, like, Nick is surprising in those ways. Like, when we would have mocks for um, the BBC Kings, a lot of times he would just bring something that I really wouldn't expect and just say, like, all right, you know, it's good that I know about that now because I'll try to keep that in mind for when I go into a game because... You never know, like someone could have that thought process and I don't want to be completely oblivious to it. So Nick's sneaky in a lot of ways and he definitely showed it here because it, top tier thought he had the game in the bag, knowing that with his like max HP set, he could chew an ice beam from here, but he could not take a dragon claw as Kyurem still has base 130 physical attack and uh, with a little bit of investment was able to do more than 50 to an Alakazam. So good prep on Nick's part, just really good. Um, solid playing on, on both ends. Seb making those last minute changes helped with the Volcanion, but really hurt with the Rotom there as if he kept the Scarf on that. It looks like he probably would have won this game, but either way, close one. I'm sure Top Tier will, will bounce back. He's been putting in the work, and I know Nick was definitely looking for, for a win to bounce back, and he finally got one, so shout-outs to him. Great game. Anything you want to say, Carson? Nah, it was uh, definitely a fun one to watch down to what 20% health on a Kyurem or so yeah exactly yep love to see it so now moving on to the next one we have a pretty cool game of Blitz going up against Hiker Toad I believe that Blitz is one and two going into this and Hiker is two and one um both of these ORS teams look really really strong just looking at their team matchup um just like last time I featured Hiker's team for an RS game, it looks like an OU team pretty much. And Blitz isn't far behind as he actually has the Uber Aegis, uh, Aegis Lash, which isn't allowed in most like Gen 6 competitions. But we figured that we would uh, allow it here as in Gen 7 and even Gen 8. It really hasn't appeared to be anything overwhelming. It probably is better in Gen 6 than the other two, but still. Um... Gen 8, I think it dropped to UU, right? On the lottery? Yeah, it literally dropped to UU. It might be like UUBL now, but either way, like, that's just insane. That Aegis Slash constantly getting banned. Every time it got retested, just, they decided it's just still too much, and now it is not even an OU anymore, so. Especially in a limited deck, you think it'd, like, be thriving, but no. Exactly. Exactly. That's really surprising. But, yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens this season, because we're using it in all three tiers, so... Like I said, both these guys have these really powerful teams, and both, of course, very solid players. So we will get right into their game. As Blitz leads with the um, Blissey, as Rotom is just going to go for the Bolt Switch, uh, getting some momentum, and going right into his Gengar to take that Toxic. Worked out pretty well, but now goes back into his Rotom, maybe to scout 
a certain kind of move as here he's just going to volt switch again go into the snorlax and reveal that he is immunity on the snorlax which is pretty cool and now he reveals to be a pretty cool snorlax set going right for uh the body slam getting the power on the Domphan and goes for the curse but as he goes for the curse um i think blitz is going to knock off next turn as body slam does a good little chunk but the knockoff reveals that he's Chopple Snorlax, so that is cool because that's a really, really nice lure for Mega Metacham, as you would like in a Snorlax is one of the last Pokemon you expect uh, to be able to, to 1v1 Mega Metacham, but with the Curse plus Chopple Berry, it could probably take an HJK, which sounds pretty insane, but maybe it can, I would imagine. Because that's the thing, Snorlax's physical bulk is so sneaky. Like, when you have insanely high hit points like that, and all of a sudden just like invest a ton in physical defense then like it skyrockets up and then getting plus one makes it skyrocket up even more and then having the chopple berry yeah I, i'm very confident that it could take a high jump kick from a pretty hefty amount exactly and you know that hiker's gonna power every single time he body slams so that is uh <laughs> <laughs> that is also a thing so really cool set on hikers part as here he's just going to continue to body slam crazy how little that does to suicune though 27 percent from a plus one stab snorlax as um this time does a little bit more with the 29 but not quite enough as the suicune is going to be able to rest this next turn still would have been able to take one more and probably get that rest off so here he gets the rest on the sleep talk roll 25 that time suicune is just insanely bulky crazy as here he gets the calm mind in his sleep revealing that he is a uh, crow coon so here blitz makes the hard uh, switch into the crocodile which was a pretty cool play but then hiker actually reveals to not have an item on this rotom uh, i guess mostly for the crocodile and and making it a more reliable switch into that as the knockoff is severely weakened and um yeah, only 24 HP. That makes it a very safe switch into a Crocodile, which is cool. So good prep on Hiker's part. But unfortunately for him here, he does just go for the Volt Switch, thinking that uh, Blitz would switch out. And now he does click Volt one more time, as uh, he did take a decent amount of chip with those two knocks. Now, knocks off the Blissey. Now, Blissey gets the Toxic off on the Landorus. And I thought, like, oh yeah, Earthquake won't be able to knock it out here. But he actually reveals to be the superpower here, likely for the Crook. Obviously, it hits Blissey hard as well. And that does just take out the Blissey. So cool prep on Hiker's part as he's going to go into his Mew here. Mew is one of the best checks to Mega Metacham in the whole game. As Blitz does just Baton Pass into the Crocodile, thinking that that would scare out the Mew. But unfortunately for him, it does not. Hiker's going to U-turn out into his Rotom as the Suicune just clicks Scald and does not get a burn here but i believe he does fish for it and gets it on this next turn uh yes that is correct and now there's like a little bit of a sitting best okay maybe not yet i think yeah i think he's gonna rest here and then hiker's gonna go back into rotom oh he heal bells first right he got the heal bell on the mew that works out nicely for him because he's just gotten the burn on the rotom and had previously toxic the landorus so good prep on hiker's part as here they're just gonna kind of sit here as um, the Suicune wakes up again and is probably just going to rest here on the incoming Hydreigon. The Hydreigon going for Dark Pulse there probably says that it's Scarf or just not Specs and not any kind of boosted Dark move. That is doing a decent chunk as like one flinch could put the Suicune in a bad spot as he does really taunt so he is not Choice Scarf or Choice at all. So here comes the Dauphin as that gets crit there but probably didn't matter. Maybe he would have gotten off some Ice Shard chip if he has it but not a big deal as here he subs and he's going to baton pass into the aegis slash as he was probably hoping that he'd be able to take any hit from you here but hiker was ready for that as um metacham into aegis slash is definitely a very scary prospect for his team so good prep going right for the shadow ball that would hit both super effectively and breaks the sub and forces um or bliss is just not ready to commit to any kind of sweep here even after that autonomize so now if snorlax whirlwinds him out that's a crazy snorlax that he's body slam curse whirlwind uh i wonder what his last attacking move was on the snorlax maybe something like earthquake oh i gotta hit Aegislash. yeah i guess you could try and scare it out like before one actually but 
Yeah. That's a cool set. Very cool. Imagine Quake work. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great set too because it lures both potential Aegis Slash that wants to, to hit it with Sacred Sword as well as Metachamp. He could be... Did, was he revealed leftovers? I guess he could be arrest like the new heal belt. No, he was uh, the Choppleberry. Oh, no, no, he was the Choppleberry. Yeah, that was a really good set here. I like that a lot. So here comes the um, Suicune coming in after the Whirlwind. It's a really cool set on Hiker's part as he's just going to go right for the Body Slam doing nothing because he took the Intimidate from the Crook. And now is going to pivot into his Rotom. Gets the burn again. The Suicune is putting some pressure on just by being able to uh, get those powerful burns, which obviously in Oras were way more significant as this Rotom dies from 12 here. And now the Gengar is able to just come in, clicking Shadow Ball and knocking the Suicune out. And I, I'm guessing that was uh, Choice Specs there, right? Because 42 to a Suicune, even if it was Fizz Death, yeah. I feel like... Exactly, and then he tried to switch out on the Crook here. Um, Blitz got the play right, getting the Pursuit on the Gengar. And um, here comes the Lander. See, as he's just going to stay in here and continuously pursue this thing. That does a crazy amount of damage, though, does it not? That's got to be like Earth Plate, Max Attack, or something. Because we know it wasn't choice. That's an insane amount. Like, I know he's not intimidated or anything. I would imagine it's, it's like a Scarf Crook or something. Um, but still, like, dang, 95%. That's Landorus is so strong. All right, so he's just stayed in here clicking Pursuit. Whittles down the Landorus as he's able to bring in the Metacham here. As he goes for the Zen Headbutt, knocks out the incoming Snorlax, as the Mew probably wouldn't have been able to take two HJKs coming in, or like two returns or double edges or something. As here he's going to go for the Baton Pass into the Aegis Slash once again taking that shadow ball but now he'll be able to autotomize on it because he knows that the Mew doesn't really have anything that he could hit him with as the U turns out crit mattered just kidding now here he's going to autonomize one more time <laughs> knowing that he could probably take a hit from the hydra and it does activate the weakness policy as here he's able to iron head the hydra and that crits and hiker probably should have gone into landorus first because had he gone into landorus first obviously this age of slash i mean it could have magnet rise but um, it already revealed the Autotomize, probably isn't going to have the, the Magnet Rise as well, and the Earthquake would have uh, probably either knocked him out or probably done a similar amount of damage to the Dark Pulse, and also getting the minus one attack could have potentially been nice, but maybe he really predicted a special one or a mixed one. I don't know exactly what his thought process was, but I think at minus one, that Iron Head probably wouldn't have knocked out a Hydra without a crit. So... Yeah. It probably would have been exactly like I don't know how bulky it was, but even a, an uninvested Hydra in bulk, I would imagine like could take a plus one Iron Head from that amount, especially because he turned out to be Jolly Age Slash and not even Adamant. So I maybe he just thought it'd be like Metacham free Drain Punch or Power Up Punch or something. Right. I wonder. I wonder. That was interesting. As um, yeah, because he didn't get the minus one. From the Intimidate on this Aegis Slash, it was able to definitely knock out. Because like, I don't think that crit mattered at all. So now he brings in his Landorus, does get the minus one attack on the Aegis Slash as he's able to go for the Shadow Claw. Knocks out the Landorus, and now it all comes down to this. It's Aegis Slash versus Mew. Aegis Slash does need a crit from this range to knock out the Mew because the Mew is very nearly max bulk. And he's a jolly Aegis Slash, so it's not even a roll. If he was adamant, I think it might have been a roll, but he's not adamant. He has to be jolly for... The Mega Arrow, as, as Blitz said. So here he's going to go for the Shadow Claw on the Mew, and he crits. So, <laughs> and it actually turns out to be Rocky Helmet. So wow, that's a zero zero. Oh no, he still got the Meta Champ in the back. I was going to say a zero zero victory, but um, that wasn't the case. It was a uh, a one zero in Blitz's fa uh, favor. But I guess if he roosted there because he was Rocky Helmet, then he won v ones the Meta Champ. So yeah, yep, crazy game, really a tight one. What was, uh, what was TJ saying? It was like 90% chance for a crit, but then they lowered it to the Yeah. <laughs> or, right. Something for Exactly. Someone was like, it was Shadow Claw's high chance to crit, so obviously it crits every time, and TJ was just like, yeah, it used to always be 90%, or like they changed it to 90% instead of 100% now because they need Urshifu to look special with its new moves. And he's right. 
it, it was definitely talk about Stone Edge whenever it hits, 100% crit. We all know by now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just gotta hit it first. Yeah, you just gotta hit it first. It's definitely a crazy game. Really unfortunate for Hiker because he prepped so well. Like that Snorlax set was great. The Mew, even though like he brought a passive set, it just kind of really fit perfectly into his team and did its job nicely. The Landorus was, was cool. Um, the right, cool. Itemless Rotom was, was pretty cool too. So he played it really well throughout the whole game, but so did Blitz. Like he was pretty far behind and he made all the plays he had to to really kind of get back into this game. So shout outs to him for sure. Hiker just kind of made the misplay, I think, at the end with not putting in his Landorus first before the Hydra as um, Carson could be right as like, yeah, power or punch. Uh, Metacham could have been dangerous in that situation, but uh, I guess it wasn't like as likely that that's what he'd have, being that he. Well, actually, I actually think he. Yeah, it was baton sub. Yeah, baton oh, sub. He already revealed the Zen, so. Yeah, baton. Yeah, it actually was power up punch. Yeah. Exactly. So, probably a misplay on Hikers' part towards the end there. But even so, he probably he still had it in his in his favor to win because the Shadow Claw isn't more than a fifty percent chance to crit. So, um, definitely a shame for him. But great game by Blitz, great game by both guys. And now we will move on to the final game of the week as we have a returning coach for the third week in a row. We have Kaz one more time. Uh, this guy just keeps having all the close games and keeps ending up on the uh, you know weekly highlights. I was trying to find another one that I thought was closer, but I saw a couple that, that were kind of close, but at the same time just seemed like one coach really had more of the the control or momentum so i just felt why not like if this is really the closest game and illusion i don't think has been in any any of these so far so might as well yeah. include him so oh we did put him in last week we did. yeah we put oh, him yeah. in versus nick yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yep Holy, I'm hard. Holy. yep he had a pretty I'm good game versus ice this week good. if ice like didn't mm -hmm. i guess sack a couple things that probably could have been a pretty good one Yeah, it really did. Um, but yeah, this week for the most part, a lot of the coaches kind of seem, a lot of the ones that won kind of seemed to uh, had control for a lot of the game. So we figured this one was definitely more exciting as both of these guys have really powerful looking teams. Kaz is bringing the Tangela though, which is cool because it's a Tangela, why not? As Illusion has a really powerful looking squad, just bring the DoD, which is heavily underrated in my opinion. Obi used it really well this week. I think he brought some kind of like crazy assault vest set, but it just had such good coverage versus Scoot's team that even though it's so weak, it was able to actually do quite a bit of damage before getting taken out. So DoD is, is a cool Pokemon. I think it was, it was probably better in Oraps without like the power creep of, I mean all of yeah. were better in Oraps, but right. maybe it accidentally like, catch up to have it a point higher in Oraps than like Agreed. Sun and Moon and such. Agreed. I think it's definitely slept on it in general, and Oras in particular. Like, it's so hard to take down and just has so many potential sets that it could run. It just gets so many different moves. Its move pool is really, really vast. So, cool Pokemon. And then he's got the Crobat, Hydreigon, Aegislash, which we just saw go ham in the last game. He's got the Conk, and then uh, Mega Diancy. As Kaz here, he's got the Mega Gardevoir. He's got Tangela. Drapion, Rotom Wash, Skarmory, and Mamoswine as we will get right into this game and Kaz leading with his Gardevoir and Illusion with the Deoxys defense. Not really the best uh, lead matchup for Illusion, but he is going to stay in regardless and just get up his rocks, revealing that maybe he was a uh, faster set intentionally than the Gardevoir. I don't know if it was necessarily to outspeed base form Gardevoir or um, if he has speed for another reason, maybe for example something like Mamoswine, but either way is faster and gets up the rocks before Kaz can get his taunt and that is uh, nice for him because Kaz's team does not appreciate hazards let me tell you so here he goes for the will-o-wisp and unfortunately for Kaz he gets crit by the crowbat which obviously matters a pretty good deal because he had just gotten burned so this uh, brave bird yeah probably would have done like 20 percent like just barely would have scratched him so definitely unfortunate as here he's going to will-o-wisp Again, predicting him to uh, have switched out. So that turn did not work out very well for Kaz, unfortunately. As here is going to go into his Rotom Wash, as Illusion is going to taunt. And that one works out for, for Kaz pretty well. As here, he's actually going to reveal that he's Scarf, uh, at least most likely. And Vol switches out, bringing in his Drapion, which does have a Black Sludge. 
and here comes the DOD as um, it does reveal to be faster than the drape and they're both going to kind of exchange hazards here as uh, finally illusion does reveal the taunt I thought this was weird by illusion like talking after he already got up to talk to Spike you know I know I was kind of su uh, surprised about that too but I guess he the only thing I could think of was maybe it's like a guts conk and then also Aegis Slash and Hydra aren't affected by it so I don't know if he just wasn't that worried but he does ultimately reveal the taunt which works out well because it turns out the Drapion has Swords Dance so that is actually pretty nice for him as he's just going to go for the low kick which does nothing but um going to try to whittle him down a little bit as he gets up his third spike so now even though the um it looks like causes a pretty decent advantage because he's already knocked out one of uh, illusions pokemon and has a poison deoxys here as the toxic spikes up M illusion getting up all of his hazards is a really really big threat to cause because unless he's able to defog them with Skarm being his only potential defogger here, then things like Tangelo really do not appreciate this. The guard already got so weakened that it almost dies just to all these hazards. Mamoswine is going to take a big chunk. Um, Rotom, of course, doesn't appreciate some Stealth Rock damage. And yeah, this Drapion, of course, as well, will take a ton from all these hazards. So uh, Illusion getting up all his hazards here is a big threat. So he's going to stay in and taunt once again as Kaz tries to catch him going for the Swords Dance. And he's just going to finally switch out as... Kaz does reveal the knockoff here. I guess Illusion thought maybe he didn't have knockoff as his last move. I don't know, but that did yeah, not work out very well. Galaxy Brain. Well Galaxy Brain. That that was that was great. So baiting him into a false sense of security, I could appreciate that. Then gets the Aegis Slash with the knockoff. That does not work out well for Illusion because this. Aegislash just goes in right now, like outside of the Drapion. Um, a Life Orb Aegislash basically just claims a kill on anything that comes in on it, and if it outspeeds things like Skarmory and um, Tangela, then it does a lot of damage, as well as the Gardevoir is, is more than weakened enough to be picked off by a Shadow Sneak, so definitely not a good turn for Illusion, but great um, subtle mind games by Kaz as it really came through there, fading him into thinking that he didn't have the knock, or at least wouldn't go for it. I see where he brings in the conk, and I don't know if this is Guts, because this does so little, this Force Palm. Actually, no, it does kind of do a lot, because it is Force Palm, so I don't know. Um, is base 70? It's 60. I've never seen it ran. Oh, yeah, Lord. base 60, but of course, Illusion's going for the power. It's like, <laughs> um, typical Illusion. As he's going for the Force Palm powers. So maybe that is Guts, as Force Palm being so weak, still doing 50% to a Drapion, which is quite bulky on the physical side. As, but it does absolutely nothing to this Tangela, though. Here he crits with the Ice Punch, and I do think that mattered. I don't know if the Tangela could have done too much back, but still, I don't think that would have killed because Ice Punch isn't yeah. doubly as strong. Unless he was Iron Fist or Sheer Force, then I think that mattered. I'm not exactly sure if, if he was one of those things, though. If he was Gus, then I... I think that did matter. So the Tangela goes down. And now here comes the Mega Guard once again. I'm guessing he doesn't have the Mach Punch. Like, I don't know if that would knock him out from here anyway because it's a four times resist. But uh, he's going to sack the Deoxys defense. Now comes the Hydra, which basically reveals that he's Scar because, um, yeah. Now he brings in the Drapion as he's just able to click Fire Blast once again. That was kind of surprising that he brought in the Drapion there, though. I'm not exactly sure why he brought that in no, no, stay. yeah <laughs> me yeah. neither so he, yeah exactly i'm not really sure what that one was maybe he just had a specific speed tier on his on his drapion that he wanted to test and see if this was a scarf hydra because maybe he was like a slower guard i really am not quite sure on that because yeah, i just that would work yeah but that's the, the only thing i probably get out the bed, maybe punch. right that's the only thing i could think of so here he brings in his Mamo versus the Hydra as Illusion is going to switch out here into his Diancie. Goes for the Life Orb Ice Shard, does a pretty good chunk as he's going to preserve his Mamo Swine as it can still come in on these hazards even though it takes a ton as he brings in the Skarmory and this thing is going to be pretty easily 2 it KO'd by the uh, Mega Diancie as it does not appear to be a specially defensive Skarmory at all. And here comes the Rotom Wash. 
Yeah, seriously. Right, we were saying that in the chat, like, all of a sudden, uh, like, it just seemed like Kaz was kind of destroying him, and then Illusion just brought in Hydreigon, and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> this started to turn into a game, and now Illusion's up 3-2, but now, as you see, Kaz hits his Hydro Pump with his Rotom, and is able to knock out the um, Mega Diancy here. So this was another weird one, because he brings in the Kunk instead of... The Hydra, which seemed kind of bizarre because I don't know if he has Mach Punch on this Conk or not. It, I'm guessing maybe not because he didn't go for it on the guard. Because I feel like it could knock out a guard from 8% just because guard is so frail. But at the same time, maybe not because if it's a physically defensive one, then it'd have to do like over 30% to like a neutral guard. Of so I I really don't know. But the fact that he brought yeah, this... Something like it would allow him to Draco exactly yeah that this seems like there was just no rhyme or reason to it because he could have brought the hydra in tried to draco the rotom or just draco whatever was in front of him and then if he brings in mamoswine next turn and he's afraid that he won't be able to uh, knock it out or do enough damage which actually isn't the case because the mamoswine is only at 54 and it's life orb and it's going to take 37.5 from all these hazards I, yeah i really don't get that play because I'm pretty sure if Illusion just goes Hydra here, he wins. But maybe he just didn't want... The only thing I could think is that maybe had he not knocked out the Rotom, and the Rotom got a Hydra off, that maybe he'd be in range maybe of Ice Shard. Modest? Oh, maybe. Yeah, it could be that he was modest. But either way, I'm just trying to think, like, maybe the damage of Hydra Pump... I know it won't do that no, much. Put him, in the ice range. put him in ice shard range. That's the only thing I could think because otherwise this play didn't really seem to make any sense. As yeah, he does. Even then, he's banking on a miss. Right. Yeah, that too. So, huh. so here he Dracos and is able to knock out the Rotom. As now it comes in Mamo versus Hydra. I don't know if a crit knocks out the Hydra here. But I do know that a minus. To Draco Meteor will knock out this Mammoth Swine because this Mammoth Swine is only at 16% after all the hazards. So it turns out the Ice Shard goes off, and I think it could have knocked him out, but the Draco does miss. So Illusion misses the Draco, and now with the Life Orb damage after the Ice Shard, the Mammo drops at the same yeah. time. So it's a 0 0 so, victory. What's up? Even if he kept um, Wash alive, Mammo would have just died to the Life Orb chip from killing Wash and then one Ice Shard. Right, yeah, I, I really am confused by that because he was at 16%, so yeah, just two Ice Shards would have knocked him out. Two but Life Orbs. Yeah, two Life Orbs. Yeah. Right. I'm definitely I confused, know. but... Past two games, like, both, it's unfortunate that both Hydra and Illusion lost their hats, but both of them could have been prevented pretty easily, in my opinion. Right. Definitely kind of confusing, as that really went a long way in both of these games, like... The other one was a 1-0 that could have been changed to a 1-0 in the other direction. And now this one turned out to be a 0-0 victory for Kaz. And, um, yeah, it could have been a 1-0 a for Illusion. But either way, it was a really exciting game. Like, it was funny because both Carson and I were saying, when we looked at the UDL chat, they were already kind of talking about it. And uh, they were talking about, like, Draco misses and how... Uh, Illusion got unlucky, so I start watching this game, and I'm just like, Kaz is killing him. Like, this is just like, looks like it's gonna be a wash, and then all of a sudden, Illusion just brings in a Scarf Hydra, like the most simple set, like probably the most common set on a Hydra, and just starts like knocking everything out, and all of a sudden, it just comes down to uh, whether Hydra's gonna hit Draco on uh, Mamoswine, and unfortunately for Kaz, it misses, and maybe he should have clicked Dark Pulse? Like, I don't know. I guess he just really was afraid that being put into ice shard range would knock him out uh with with a life orb ice shard i don't know what the role was but unfortunately he got yeah, punished for going for draco yeah yeah definitely never like to see 90 percent movement right it's true yeah that was um that was definitely something. Great game to end off the week. Definitely an exciting one. But unfortunate for Illusion. But hey, Kaz needed to bounce back. So I'm glad he got a win. And I'm looking forward to see 
how everybody does going forward into um, week five. Like we mentioned before, shout out to TJ and Bliss for already getting their week five game done. Obviously, we won't spoil that result for all of our viewers that are watching from all over the world. And um, yeah, I, I'm, like we said before, just proud that you guys have been getting the games done on time every week pretty much. Definitely try to keep that up. Um, two more weeks left for being able to make transactions. So if you are watching this, this far into the video keep that in mind we'll definitely make an announcement reminder of that coming up soon but yeah we're going into week five our second time playing sun and moon this season and hopefully it is fun uh sun and moon is obviously the tier that i would say people probably have the most experience in across the board so i yeah, yeah i would definitely say that because i feel most of the draft format has been in sun and moon Since yep yeah i don't think anyone in the league is gen 8 only or like joining in gen 8. right definitely not so yeah, that should be exciting. Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Not much. Just good job getting the games done. They've been really fun to watch. Had a lot of close ones. And then pretty soon, maybe not next week, but the week after, we can start discussing the playoff picture in the videos as well. Yeah, that'd be cool. We'll definitely have a better idea probably after like week six or so. As um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be two-thirds of the season done. So with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Definitely let us know what you thought, and we're excited to continue making these going into these coming weeks. We've been getting some really good games every week. That's one of the cool things about this league is like not only just the change up of tiers, keeping everything kind of fresh, but also just the the quality of the players in the league. We're always getting good prep and good playing. Uh, like for example, a lot of the games that you guys haven't seen, they are good games. It's just we want to pick the, the closest ones as they're kind of the most exciting to watch. So. Um, with that being said, hope you all have a uh, nice day. Hope you had a nice weekend. And yeah, thank you all for watching. We will see you in the next one later.